Hello and welcome back to part two of the Russian Navy Baryag Missile Destroyer Cruiser. As I said in the last um, part one, I was going to start doing some undercoating. I haven't done that yet because I um, just gave all the, the decking a bit of a wash down with soapy water like I did with the side of the ship just to make sure it's all clean and and um, nothing from my oily fingerprints all over it before I put undercoat on. But what I have been doing is um, I'm on to page, the next page, and I'm putting all the parts together. So page five, which is really the step one, was the gun. Then there's the um, there's a couple of um, supports in there as well, and then there's the little life rafts. There's some of those. So I've taken off all the little pieces off that I can paint um, separately. There's a breakwater there as well, um, so they can be painted separately apart on that section, that page. Then I'm on to page six, which is here. And again, more little life rafts that I'll be painting up uh, separately, most likely brush painting those. And then while I was doing part six, I'm looking at the area under the helicopter, um, which I'll show you is basically, if you look here, so I'm collecting all the parts for this here. Now, these two walls on the side here, try to get that in view, there they are, um, they are underneath the helicopter landing pad. Now, there's a bit of detail there with a couple of doors to go in, and there's, uh, looks like another hatch, and maybe some little um, alarm bells or something on the top there. They're all apart, they're all on the plastic, they're moulded on. Um, but these up this end here, there's nothing. It's just plain plastic. The up the opposite piece has similar on the other side with a couple of doors and so forth. But again, up this end, there's nothing there. I went to my reference photo and um, and video of the ship, and when you look at it, there's quite a bit of um, piping that runs around. So it's part of the drainage system for the drainage for the helicopter pad above so water water will just drain off and go through these pipes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those pipes um, just to give it a bit of something there rather than just having blank uh, walls there I mean it's going to be a lot better so what I've got is I've got a bit of styrene here I've got some little I think this is uh, one mil diameter and I'm, I'm, I've cut a square, little square box piece, which I've got in that corner there. I don't know if you can see that. Might be able to move it over a bit. You'll be able to see a better angle. But anyway, there it is there. So that's going to sit in the corner. And then I'm going to have a pipe running across. So we'll have uh, this piece of pipe running across the top of there like that. And then probably around that side as well. And then I'll run a piece that will go down into the deck. Run it down that way. So hopefully you can see that. Probably won't focus. But otherwise, um, look at how... Let me have a check. You'll see that there's just nothing... How blank that wall is see you know section here is okay but this this end here there's nothing so i'm just going to put that piping along the top just make it look a bit more detailed when i come across a lot of things in the kit that uh, aren't that look a bit plain i'll go back to my photos and go ah oh, no, there's a air conditioning box there or there's uh there's some other item there that i could possibly replicate and put that in okay anyway i'm going to continue on and finish these little pieces off detail them up a bit and then i will get around to giving an undercoat to the side of the ship and the um the deck okay back shortly
All right, so we're back, and I've finished uh, doing the piping on these little pieces here, as you can see. Sort of making it a bit more detailed. We've got down pipes there, and it's going to look all right once it's covered and sprayed. So, yeah. And I've also been continuing on with all the page six um, pieces. Um, there was a couple of... Um, they call it a pop group. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, maybe it's some uh, radar devices or something, but there they are there. So, and it does say they're optional. So it's got a little bit of photo etch around the around there. Uh, I know if you want to comment if you know what that is, it's called a pop they're called a pop group in the description. And they're optional. Now, I am going to put these ones on because um, I don't think they're on the actual ship. I'm not sure. I will have to double check that. Um, but I do know that there's also optional some SAN launches. Also optional. We look at the instructions here. So there's those two that I just showed you. These are the SAM launches which are also optional now every video and photograph of the actual Variag ship I've seen does not have those there and it does give you a cover to put over there if you choose not to put them on so I'm not putting them on I want this to be as accurate as possible and I haven't seen photos of those in place there's there's nothing there on the actual ship and uh, talking about accuracy, um, I did say I was going to paint and do some uh, undercoating, which I have done. I'll just show you that now. So here we go with the, this was yesterday, so it's going to be very bright in the light. But So this has uh, Mr. Surface uh, Primer all the way across and... Uh, looking really nice so that's that's all ready for paint and i've chosen my gray which will be an xf 75 um, tamiya gray now i've also put that back in a second i've also done the decks they're both undercoated and that surface did a great job of covering up where I took the anchor off on there. Um, now that, that's filled in really nicely. Uh, so while I've been looking at all of this, I've found that the colours are not accurate. Okay, so, well, the colours are accurate. It's the placement of the colours that are not accurate. So uh, let me just adjust my camera up and we'll have a look at this color sheet parking guide. One second. Okay, it's better. So um, what I've found is that the, the view on the side is fine. The side views, no problem. But when you get to the top down and you look, now what's happened here is they don't show you underneath where the missile tubes are they show the orange color for the deck in the center but that actually goes under those tubes as well so that whole section there is going to be this orange and by the way i have made up the orange uh, so what i used was i used tamiya red brown which is xf64 I mix that with Tamiya Red, just plain red. I can't show you because I've used it all. And I've created, that's my mix there. And I think it's pretty close to the deck color, as you can see. So that's going to be my deck color. And it was 50-50, roughly. I sort of lightened it as I went, adding the red. But I would say it's close to 50-50 red with dark um, 
with the red brown yeah now so that's all fine um now they've got black here which is fine that is black that's good but what i'm going to do is i've got two black options to choose from here so i've got normal xf uh, x1 black uh the tamiya one or i did get pick up some mr hobby metal black it's called now i like this more it's not as black it's it's got it's got a sort of gray tinge through it i think that's going to look fantastic for the deck uh compared to the black they're suggesting which is just to me is too black um, but this black metal, which is what that deck is, I think that's going to look great. So that's there. So that's fine. Now, as we go up to the center here, a lot of these areas here are correct. And continuing up here, you can't tell on here, but the lifeboat, the launches, the two boat launches here, are actually got green on them whereas they have them as just all white. So I will have to make a change there. Now, this section here where the missile launches in the deck are, so on the deck itself, it's this area here. So they've got these missile launches um, painted grey. So what they want is... Sorry, my arm. Uh, these painted the grey of the ship. They're not grey. <laughs> okay, these are the same colour as the deck. They're that deck red or red brown. The only part on these that are grey, I don't know if you can see this, are just those pieces in the centre which lift up the covers. They're the only parts that are grey. I'll sh I'll put up a reference photo. And you'll be able to see what I mean. And also, where they've got all this deck here around here as black, it's it's not all black. So it's the deck color is the deck orange. Is all that center area, including the covers. So that will all be orange. There is. Uh, a grey area, which is just on the outside here, and that'll be masked off, and that's going to be grey. Um, also, as you run, go down further, this is all correct. Um, we've got the, the black deck all through here. But as we get down towards the helicopter pad, um, they've got that as the red brown color when it's not on every and i'll show you again there's some photos i'll put up it's green the helicopter landing pad is green including the area behind it where it runs down into the hangar is green not the red brown so i'll be changing that as well um, the black deck around here is all is accurate but what it means now is that there's going to be a, a lot of um, masking and uh, little fiddly parts to do when it comes to painting the deck. Which is something I want to get done because I can't put anything on the deck until it's painted. So yeah, so I'm going to work on that. I'll, I'll put some photos up and you'll see some more pictures of the ship. There's some quite good photographs and... Uh, you can see the detail and you can see where the colors are are on this and and the um the faults uh, that they're showing on this deck here because none of the ships that i looked at have the coloring exactly like this particularly this area um, uh, it would be easier to just spray that all gray those missile hatches and everything um, but it's not how it was they were actually that orangey color the same as the deck around it so 
hopefully that will be okay. And then, of course, a lot of these areas too are on top of structures that have yet to be built. All right. The plan today will be uh, to think about the process and the order I'm going to go about painting these two decks, um, what needs to be taped, what I need to spray first, how I go about it. Because there's a lot of things. There's even in here, uh, these walls are going to be grey. So that's going to have to be taped off. These walls won't because they're the ones I put the piping on. So they'll cover that. So that's already great. But these parts in here, they have to be grey. So, um, And that's the only part, really. And if you really wanted to go into the detail, I noticed on the front here where this main gun sits here, that this splinter shield that runs all the way around it, that's grey. That's the, um, the colour of the main the ship structures. But there's also the um, orange, little line of orange all the way around the base of it as well. And also the base of the gun. So one of those levels where the base, the gun sits, is also um, orange on the original ship. I'll throw a photo up and you can have a look at what I've compared it to. Um, also, a lot of these bits and pieces in here um, have a little, you know, that uh, red deck colour strip around the base of everything. But there's no way I can get in there go down to that detail as you can see in the photos um, but yes that will be grey yes I'll probably take that up and do a, a hand brush in a around one of those levels in there of the orange just to break up the the black that that area of the deck's going to be all right um, so I'm going to think about that the actual ship itself that's fine I can paint that and I will probably well definitely will paint that today We'll put the base coat down on for that. The actual waterline, I haven't decided whether I would paint the waterline on the top of the hull or on the base of this. I'm thinking, although there's a piece here that could be could get in the way. I don't know. I'll, I'll have a look at that. I may put the... Um, the hull on here just to have a look and see what, which one's better to mark it off on because that's the one that's going to be a, a light grey waterline like the off-white that's going to be the off-white all right so i've done all of the bits on page six that i wanted to take off the sprue that are of a size that i can airbrush little pieces that are really too small to airbrush I'll hand brush and I've left them I haven't touched them yet they're things that I will do individually as I come to them then for the rest of today I'm going to go over and I'm going to do the AK 630 gun here I've got to make six of those there's three fire control um, pieces there that need to be made there's a kite screech no idea what a kite screech is. Anyone know what a kite screech is? They fly coat, kites off the back of these? Anyway. <laughs> um, there's a front door. Oh, I remember that doing that in the unboxing. I don't know why they called that a front door when it's the front of the radar dish. But I've got to make three of those. And there's the air search radar, which has three of those. I think. No, there's one one of those and there's bits of photo which spread out throughout throughout those those two as well so i'm going to build all those up and then probably make a start we'll come back and have a look but make a start on this looks like the the main superstructure here which is in fact a clear piece in the kit that's going to be a bit different all right that's it back shortly with an update Okay, welcome back again, and I've got uh, some of these radar setups all done here. Um, they're in my little box for page seven. There's a 
radar unit there with some photo etch on it. See that? It's come up pretty good. That doesn't want to focus, does it? Anyway, um, so that's in there. And now I've just finished uh, this piece here. Which is a, uh, it's what they call the kite screech. Not sure what that is, but some form of radar on that. Oh, sorry. Let me get that. Thing. There it is. And uh, so that's all going into my little collection box here. Now all I have left on here it will be the air search radar which has got a bit of photo etch pieces on it i'm just going to put that together now i um i did um, paint the base coat on the side of the ship uh, that's drying now they came up really well. well we'll have a look at that um after i've finished this last radar uh, i've also bought the hull out to have a look at and uh noticed that there is quite a big seam line running all the way along there that's going to have to be um, sanded back bits here where the moulds come off that needs to be trimmed sanded or filed down or sanded down as well and that's it and this I will undercoat maybe today yeah maybe I'll give this an undercoat today and then I can um, do the uh, off-white um, waterline mark along the top I'll be able to do that first thing tomorrow and then later tomorrow when it's dried tape that off and then spray the rest of this the whole red so yeah i will try and get an undercoat on this um today all right back in shortly while i do these radars okay i thought i'd uh i film my um work on the photo etch here just to show you a uh, couple little tips sometimes you get photo etch that has this plastic on it protect it and what it can also do is protect you from losing pieces because if you peel back the top surface but leave the one on the bottom and then you come in and take off your photo etch that will stop the small pieces because they're sticking to the plastic underneath from pinging off into the twilight zone and then all you do is you come along with a razor blade and boom pop it off like that and there's your photo etch piece and then just lay that back over there so it's still protecting the rest of the pieces now for the photo etch this one's come off pretty clean although i do see you you can run your finger along the edges and you'll you'll feel uh, if there's any rough spots now for a piece like this this is a radar dish this doesn't have to join up against anything so i mean you, you can't even see it i'm looking at these through magnifying glasses and i can't even see anything there but i can feel it but i'll show you anyway what to do is if you come across a piece like this that does need sanding use these little nail file ones you buy in a chemist um, they're easy to use all you do is just going the length of your photo etch piece just run it across don't even put any pressure just so you're just touching just like that then it's gone turn it around find some more there's nothing on that one turn it around more a little nub there the reason you do it along the length of your piece of photo etch is because you don't want to bend this and you don't want to go crossways or you're likely to bend it so just go that way don't put any pressure on it just there we go it's all it takes and the last one there it's a little bit there just go like that and there we go perfectly smooth that's it right now um 
Now another thing I'm going to do with this one, this has to be bent, so it needs to be curved um, as a radar dish is. So as you can see here, they've uh, it's telling you to bend it. Well, obviously they, that's the way it is because it's uh, it looks bent. <laughs> and, and then it's just going to attach, not by much by the looks of things, just onto the little nub on D3 there. So, yeah, but, uh, interesting. There's not going to be much holding this piece on. Anyway, now for bending, what I find is easiest is get a piece of foam. And this is hard foam. Um, sometimes you can buy this in packings, things that are packed in boxes and stuff like that. I don't remember what this is for. It might have been something for my, um, my um, drone I have. But there. Now, I've had this for almost... The whole time I've been modeling just lasts forever and all you do is you get your piece of photo etch like this place it on there just make sure your photo etch is up the right way sometimes it's hard to tell but you can usually see where the detail is it's detail here so that's going to sit there like that and what we want is a slight curve in it and the easiest way to do that is to grab a toothpick uh, that's what we call them here toothpick and place it in the center of your photo etch cross it like that all right now I'll just move my camera down a bit and have a better look at this what's happening there we go so all right, so here's your photo edge. You put that in the center. Hold it down a little bit with a little bit of pressure and start rolling it backwards and forwards. And if you go the same distance out each time, you'll get an even curve as you're pushing it down. There we go starting to curve up now. Now this photo etch from Trumpeter is really quite thick photo etch. It's taking a little bit more than normal to get the curve but it is coming on. You just keep rolling it and rolling it until eventually get it curved as much as you want it to be. Let's have a look at that. So now we've got this piece that has a curve in it. See? It doesn't want to focus on that. There we go. So nice curve in that. I think that should be enough for what I want. And that is there. Easy. Now, if you if if you find that you've got to bend pieces that um, are a bit stiff and a bit hard to do, you can always anneal them, just heating them up with a lighter. Um, but be careful when you do that. There's some. If you come across some really delicate pieces, like some of them have, see these little bits here with the tiny little bits of lattice and stuff like that. If you were to put your lighter across that to try and heat that up, it's fairly likely that those little bits in there will just snap and melt away. Bend and go, yeah, it wouldn't be a good result. Uh, I wouldn't even risk doing it on that bigger piece there because there's so many little bits, little joins in there. But thicker solid pieces like this, should be okay. Should be all right. All right. I'll put, I'll continue to put this together, and we'll have a look at it when I'm done. Okay. Welcome back again. So here's our final base coat of um, Temia XF75 Grey, and it's gone on really, really nice. Look at that. Beautiful coverage. 
and I like the color too. It's really nice. So that's done, and that I did that about three hours ago. So I'm gonna leave that for the whole day. Well, I'm not gonna to touch that. Let that dry completely. So that's that. And now I've uh, got the hole out and um, I've cleared off the seam or join line, the seam line that ran all the way along. So that's all completely smooth now. And um, sanded all that down. And I've washed it, gave it a clean, and this is ready to put a base coat um, primer on it. So I'll do that now. And then uh, tomorrow I'll be able to spray the um, waterline along the hull and let that dry for the day before I tape it up and then spray the hull red. All right. Um, so I think we're pretty much caught up. I still haven't done anything with the deck. There's still The deck's still in undercoat. I'll, I haven't decided what I'll do on that yet. But, uh, yeah, so that's it for part two. In part three, we'll, we'll have this painted, I guess. We'll have some more structures done for the to go on the deck, and we'll start looking at um, actually painting up that deck, getting that looking good. All right, so... Um, as usual, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit the notifications tab so you get notified of the videos as they come out. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, go back in the playlist and you can watch the whole um, uh, unboxing of this. And comment down below if you've got any comments and um, have any suggestions or ideas or anything you want to share, put in the comments below. And I will come back and I will see you in part three of the Russian Navy Barry Yag by Trumpeter Build. Thanks a lot. See you.